Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with shrimp etouffee. That's right, we're going to use this spicy and delicious New Orleans classic to demonstrate that it is possible to get good results using horrible, waterlogged, poor quality frozen shrimp, which unfortunately for many of you is the only option. But anyway, we'll get into that in a minute. For now, we're going to go ahead and prep our Creole slash Cajun spice blend. And we're going to want about a tablespoon of this stuff, and you can certainly buy these pre-made, pre-mixed, but we're going to make our own. And it's going to start with some dry thyme, some dry oregano, some powdered garlic, some powdered onion, some paprika, some cayenne pepper, some white pepper, and some black pepper. And that's it. Simply give that a mix, set that aside, and you probably saved like $7 not buying that pre-made mix. You're welcome, frugal food wishers. All right, so our spices are done, and it's on to the aforementioned substandard shrimp. And there they are in all their water-retaining glory. And buying this style of shrimp presents several problems. First of all, there's no shells to make a stock with. But above and beyond that, because these are so small and they are frozen, peeled, and deveined, they tend to retain a lot more water. And then what happens, even if you drain them very well, you add them to your gravy, and it dilutes your sauce, and it thins out the texture, and it's generally a bad scene. So to make this stuff usable, we got to do a few tricks. So I let mine drain in a strainer for at least 15 minutes, and then I also try to dry it on top of some paper towels. So once we've gotten that as dry as possible, we're going to go ahead and remove the paper towel. We're going to season this with some salt and about a teaspoon of our spice blend. And we'll go ahead and give that a mix. And then what we're going to do is give these a very quick sear in a very hot pan. And you'll see why in a second. So we're going to put a heavy-duty skillet on high, high heat with a little bit of vegetable oil in it and get it smoking hot. And as soon as that starts to smoke, you're going to go ahead and dump in your shrimp. All right, spread it out and just let it sear like that without touching it for one minute. And then go ahead and take your spatula, give it a mix while we cook it one minute more. So that's only two minutes total, mind you. And with shrimp this small and this waterlogged, you're really not going to be able to brown them unless you did like three at a time. But that's not really the point. We're just trying to capture that excess liquid here. So after two minutes, we're going to go ahead and transfer that into a bowl. And don't worry if the shrimp doesn't look totally cooked. It's probably not. But that's okay. We don't care. We're only after this, the juice. So let it sit for a minute. And then we're going to go ahead and strain the juice into our chicken stock. So we need two cups of liquid total. So I started with about 12 ounces of chicken broth. We'll strain those shrimp juices in, which gave us another couple ounces. And then we'll just top it off with more chicken stock to make two cups total. So even though those shrimp didn't have shells, we kind of got a little bit of a shrimp stock here. But more importantly, we've released that excess liquid that would have possibly screwed up and thinned out our sauce later. And then once that's set, we're going to go back to the stove to make our etouffee gravy. Okay, so we're going to go back into the same pan and melt some butter, a lot of it. And we're going to melt that butter on medium heat until it just starts to turn tan around the edges. And then we're going to go ahead and saute the Holy Trinity. No, not the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The other Holy Trinity, celery, peppers, and onions. The aromatic, vegetable-based cornerstone of all Cajun Creole cuisine, or so I've heard. And we're going to saute it in that butter for about two or three minutes till it starts to soften a little bit. You know the drill. The onions will start to turn translucent. And once that's happened and the vegetables look like this, we're going to go ahead and dump in the rest of our spice blend. You know, anytime we get a chance to cook the spices in hot fat, that's always a good idea. It tends to extract more flavor. And then after cooking those spices in that hot butter for a minute or two, we're going to go ahead and sprinkle in a couple spoons of flour. Oh, you knew. There was going to be a roux involved at some point. So we're going to mix in that flour and we're going to cook that about three or four minutes. You know, we like to take the raw edge off the flour. So let those flour-coated vegetables toast onto the bottom a little bit. And after three or four minutes of that, we're going to go ahead and introduce our tomato product. And I'm just using about a half cup of diced San Marzano tomatoes. You know we like those. And as opposed to just dumping this in with the stock, I like to stir it in at this point and let it caramelize a little bit onto the bottom of the pan. I know it looks all pasty and gummy, but it's not going to be a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and caramelize that a little bit onto the bottom, maybe two or three minutes. And it should look something like that. And at that point, we can go ahead and whisk in our chicken slash shrimp stock. And as you'll see, no problems with lumps. In fact, this is going to have the opposite of lumps, which are, well, I guess no lumps. I didn't really think that went through. But anyway, stir in that stock until it's all smooth. And you'll notice, like all roux-based sauces and gravies, as this comes up to a simmer, it will thicken. And then all we're going to do is kind of simmer this on medium until it cooks down a little bit. And then eventually, a few minutes later, it's going to start to look like that. And that's getting very close. And then before we add our shrimp back in, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce which, as you can see, formed the shape of a llama, which really, if you think about it, should be pronounced yama. And then just for fun, I gave it a few dashes of Louisiana hot sauce. And then we'll go ahead and stir that in. And then really, we only have like two things left to do. You want to reduce this down until it's thick enough for your liking. For me, it was right about here. 
and you're also gonna wanna taste this for salt. We did salt the shrimp, but there was no salt in our spice mixture. So definitely give this a taste. And once your etouffee gravy is the right consistency and it tastes super delicious, we'll go ahead and dump our shrimp back in, give those a mix. And as soon as those are finished cooking and heated through, we're ready to eat. And then because I had them and I was gonna garnish with them, I decided to throw in a little handful of green onion here. I recommend you do the same if you have access to the green onions, also known as scallions. And because these shrimp are so small, and we did give them that two minute sear earlier, as soon as this stuff comes back to a simmer, it's pretty much gonna be done, which mine was. By the way, the word etouffee actually refers to smothering or suffocating. And at that point, you have nothing left to do but smother that rice with that awesome spicy gravy, maybe a little more green onion. Of course, you're always gonna clean any drips from the rim of the bowl. That's just being conscientious. And then possibly a little final dusting at cayenne, just so the surface looks a little blurry in the photos, which I've noticed the cayenne causes, but I don't care, it's totally worth it. And while I start to dig into this, I'm reminded, as delicious as this is, shrimp is like my least favorite protein in this recipe. I actually prefer this done with little brown chunks of chicken or pork. So if you're not into the shrimp, this is a great, great all-purpose gravy. So anyway, this was inspired by the upcoming Mardi Gras celebration. You serve a pot of this with some rice, people will be throwing those beads at you. That's one way you can get those beads without being embarrassed on Instagram. Oh, we can tell that to you from the tattoo. But anyway, this is very delicious. And as I showed, we'll work with even the cheapest frozen shrimp. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.